A third straight promotion for Curzon Ashton as we are heading up into League One next season. Or should I say they're heading up into League One next season. Because in today's episode, we're saying our goodbyes before moving on to our new club. Hello and welcome to episode 26 of Unemployed to Legend here with Curzon Ashton for the final time in this series as we say our goodbyes to a club that we have won three straight promotions with from the National League North all the way into League One. We're just going to go through the end of season review before we say our final goodbyes to the squad themselves. They've already gone on holiday but we don't need to go into the specifics of that. So here we go, end of season review of the new arrivals who have come in. The signing of the season was apparently Brandon Horton. I can go along with that. The board were very happy with us bringing him in, delighted with the lower wage that we brought him in for. I didn't even I can't even remember how much we did bring him in for. Wait, one and a half? Why is it saying to Kings Lynn? We didn't loan him to anyone. Trying to Kings Lynn, one and a half thousand. What why? Whatever, we haven't agreed to transfer or anything for him. Which is fine, because hopefully I'll try and uh, take him to my new club, Wickham Wanderers, when we eventually move over. But he was a very good left back, also a good emergency centre back when we did need one, after a few injuries and suspensions. So he filled the gap very, very well. 47 appearances overall, 4 goal contributions, but otherwise solid, solid defender to have in the ranks. Uh, Slavi Spazol, 14 goals, 6 assists in 36 appearances. A lot of that was padded in the last two or three games of the season. He scored like six goals and an assist in that time. So a bit too inconsistent for my liking. Then again, he didn't always play. It was always Bright Moteng, who was inconsistent himself. Had we had two very good strikers who were more consistent, we would have been promoted much, much earlier, not waiting until the final two, three games of the season. We would have probably challenged Bristol Rovers for the title. Dylan Stevenson, very good up front. The board are very happy about getting him in. Again, lower wage. Nice. The whole Slavy Spazov, whole deal looks to be very good value for money. That's fine. Adam Wilson came very good in the second half of the season when we started playing him as a winger. Who'd have thought his own manager, Aldershot, would have been very happy with that? Six, uh, sorry, 14 goal contributions and a 7.06 rating in 38 games. He's a solid player. I kind of liked him, but I think he's going to be tapped out at League 2 level. Armani Little, nice little backup to Adam Bee. Uh, border happy mainly due to the transfer fee and players wage represent great, great value for money Oyedeji came in from Arsenal 29 appearances 9 assists I didn't realise it's that high wow ok he's had a uh, very good season once he got going Scott Smith was a good backup again in central midfield Billy Cracknell was a good little last minute very emergency signing for right back he also played at centre back ignore the fact it says centre back there he did play there but he's more of a right back than anything when Latty Fairweather and Coyle were not available. Charles Hagen, a big disappointment, only seven assists, oh sorry, seven goal contributions in 24. He barely played, and by the end of the season, he looked a broken man, so he would have gone back to Sheffield Wednesday anyway. Zidane Iqbal, the board are happy we got him for a lower wage. We paid £900 for him a week, and to be honest with you, kind of wasn't worth it. He had 11 goal contributions in 31 games, fine, but it just felt like he should really have lost this division. He still has that League 1 potential but I don't think he was quite at that level just yet. Luke Daly, this counts as his second uh, loan spell so he's only got one goal contribution, he has more than that I assure you. Only 12 appearances but again that's from January to the end of the season. The first loan spell he had, let's have a look, yeah he made 21 appearances. So overall about 33 appearances, he's got two assists and two goals. And a player of the match award. So it's frustrating football manager counts that as separate loan spells, which is kind of pointless. A season to remember for Curzon. They did get promoted, finishing third, even though the board only wanted us to fight bravely against relegation. Uh, full disclosure, we played the final game of the season off camera. We lost 1-0 to Harrogate. There was nothing to play for except second place. And um, Considering we finished nine points clear of Salford, I'll take third place any day of the week. We filled only less than half of Tameside, 1,857 average, home attendance 46%, that's a bit concerning. And part of the reason then I don't think Curzon might be able to compete at League 1, 
because they're not going to be able to fill out their own stadium. They couldn't fill it out at League Two. Don't think they're going to be filling it out at League One either. So it will be a struggle for Curzon to get to the money in next season and basically compete with the teams in that division. Brighton Moting top scorer, 18 goals, about six, seven of them came in the final two months of the season. So again, padding the numbers. I think Brighton Moting has tapped out at League Two potential, or sorry, current ability anyway. Moments to remember, 5-0 win against Stevenage in the beginning of the season. That was when I realised, a bit like in the National League, we were able to compete at League 2 level. 3-0 uh, victory against Accrington in September. That's when Accrington were second. They finished in the playoffs. So it's not known if they're going up yet or not. Oh, Jack McKay scored twice. That was his last hurrah before falling out of the team. And then in December, goal of the season was Armani Little, 2-0. Probably a free kick. It's a shame we can't see those anymore. But more than likely a free kick considering how many he actually scored. Uh, the club reputation hasn't improved. It's still one and a half star regional. Again, another reason I think Curzon will struggle in League One. Because a lot of teams up there are national reputation. Whereas we're only regional. So we're only going to get players in or around the Manchester area. Or basically the northwest of England. No new sponsorship deals. <laughs> How is this club going to get any money in League One, really? Sponsorship was actually the same. It's not even down, it's just the same as last season. Everything else though is up. Broadcast revenue, of course. Um, the FA Cup and League Two, I think, had a few more games, which is absolutely on TV, which is fine. Corporate hospitality is up. Competition prize money, that's the FA Cup run. And match day commercial and retail, that is up as well, because we got more people in the door. Fancy that. Uh, merchandise wise shirts so only 272 shirts sold that's still higher than before Godsmart Ford is our number one shirt seller Iqbal McKay surprise McKay is still selling a lot of shirts but he's a Curzon Ashton favorite at this point Stevenson and the old favorite Adebiyi top five shirt sellers lovely stuff for all of them and this is the best 11 for the whole season we'll just go through it quickly Vucevic in goal Horton Younger Godsmart Ford and Latty Fairweather in defense I mean, Oli Younger did play a lot of games, but why not have Michael Collins? I suppose he's not in there. Saying that, Collins didn't really have great ratings, but he's our captain, so that's why I'd probably just put him in anyway. Adabi and Doug Moore in midfield, happy with that. But Lotto Deji on the left wing, Stevenson in attacking midfield, Sam Durant on the right. It's a toss-up between Durant and Wilson, so either one I'd probably been happy with. Bright Emoting as the sole striker, considering he's our top scorer. Kind of understandable, but you could have probably swapped him with Slavy Spazov if you wanted. In fact, 19 goals. I suppose one of those was cup game. So he gets 24, 24 goal contributions in 31 appearances. Really? So 33 appearances. He's just so inconsistent. That's the problem. Is it just because he, I kept taking him out of the squad? Might be. Uh, accolades, I am... Well, no, I've manager of the month, not even manager of the year. Just manager of the month for October. A Harvey Godsmart Ford, fans player of the season and a young player of the season. Signed the season, Brandon Horton, as we saw. Gold season, on my Little, can't see that, sadly. Brighton Moting, top goal scorer in 19. Sam Durant with nine assists. That's a bit of a problem, although we had a lot of assists throughout the whole team, so we, we just spread it out as and when we could. Harvey Godsmart Ford, most player of the match awards with five. Also, 7.4 average, highest average rating. And Josh Dugmore, most passes completed, 78. He's a ball winning midfielder, actually he's a ball winning midfielder, so that makes sense. He wins the ball and passes it off. Slavi Spazov with the most goals in, by a player in the match, four goals. Obviously these are modern records, not before the actual save. Uh, same in the league match, four goals. Worst discipline, Dugmore with 12 yellow cards. You can tell he's a ball winning midfielder. He's got a lot of aggression on him, I think. Youngest player was David McLeod, one of our youngsters, 16 years old. Yeah, amazingly, he played like six times for me this season. Didn't expect a region to be playing that much for me this early in the save. Armani Little, the highest transfer fee, pay 3.5k. He's the only one we paid money for. And Kenneth Olatunde, the youngest goal scorer, 16 years old, 249 days. That was an A pizza trophy game, I think. But that is the season review. As far as dynamics go, we finally got a team leader, Michael Collins. Probably why I wanted him included in the best 11. With Jack McKay possibly stepping up. But he, even, even if I was staying this for next season, Jack McKay would probably have been going anyway because he hasn't played for such a long time. 
Uh, the new season team reports. There's no point really hovering on this too much. Apparently Hagen is my best right winger. And Wilson the best on the left. Well, he's more of a right winger anyway. Yikes. Uh, never mind. The squads are going on a pre-season break. That's it. Uh, 1st of July, I won't be here. I will be gone by that point. That's our last game. Uh, planned stadium expansion, unfortunately, had to be scrapped. Well, it's just as well I'm going then. But this is the final Curzon Ashton squad that we are going to be leaving for the next manager. I've already had a look. We've uh, counted it up. I'm leaving 19 players for the new manager. Not bad, and they're mostly under the age of 23 years old. The vast majority of them. In fact, yeah, only... Five players, well, minus the loan. So only four players will be over the age of tw well, 24 or older. And even then, that's still 27 years old being the highest. That's Armani Little and Jack McKay. But otherwise, it's a fairly balanced squad, minus David McLeod. But up to the manager, if they actually want to keep him around in the first team squad. Right. What's going to happen now is I'm just going to go and play right through to the point that I'm going to be taking over at my new squad. I don't think this is the last we're going to be seeing of some of these players, especially the likes of Godsmart Ford and Brandon Horton. Incidentally, I had a look at Brandon Horton because I, I was, I'm considering bringing him in to my new club at Wickham. Guess who's interested in him? <laughs> That's nothing to do with me. <laughs> it's absolutely nothing to do with me. I'm just happy that they are interested in him. And I'm kind of glad they are, because hopefully it'll make it easier to try and bring him in. But uh, he does have a minimum release clause. It's a bit high, 325,000. Although I didn't realise I was actually going to be leaving at the end of the season when I brought him in. But whatever. Godsmart Ford, I'm also interested in bringing him in as well. He's actually got a minimum uh, release clause as well, 94k. More, more doable that we're probably going to get Godsmart Ford in. But I'm just giving a little inside look at who I could be bringing in as well as hopefully some higher quality players depends on what the Wickham squad is currently and where we need to strengthen but other than that I'm just leaving Curzon Ashton in a good position especially financially half a million in the bank well below the wage budget although that's the new wage budget it's 26,000 a week for next season so the new manager has money to play with and 163k in transfer budget there is no debt at the club whatsoever the projection's not looking great for him, but that's all on the new manager to sort out. Overall, we've left the club in a good place. Three seasons, three promotions, money in the bank after several cup runs. One and a half star reputation, they were one star when I took over. So now it's time to say goodbye and we move on to Wickham Wanderers. So I will see you when we are about to take over. Cue the transition. And so here we are, we have taken over officially at Wickham Wanderers, new club, new challenge, same division as Curzon Ashton, but that's neither here nor there. You'll, you'll see in a bit why I chose Wickham Wanderers and to move on from our original club. So Wickham Wanderers hire Walsh in a move which is sure to spark plenty of heated debate. Craig Walsh has left Curzon Ashton to join divisional rivals Wickham. Yeah, I mean, some factions in the media had been touting Walsh as the favourite for the job, that's fine. Uh, questions will be raised as to why Walsh made the decision to take up a different job within the same division. It's called reputation, that's why. But he will face pressure to bring immediate success to Adams Park, given his former employers and previous standing. Uh, Walsh, a Vanarama National League Manager of the Year winner in 2023, could have just said National League winner overall because we won it anyway brings a blend of experience and proven credentials within to his new job he's earned himself a reputation for signing players under the age of 23 and appears to be a great fit for the club's current vision at adams park i prefer to use a 4-2-3-1 wide formation correct uh, i lifted the van Rubble national league oh there we go with curzon ashton in 2023 and i'll now be afforded the chance to enhance his reputation by bringing success to his new club Wickham finished the season in 12th, oh, finished 12th, that's okay, in League 1. Wickham have won 2, lost 1, and draw 2 of their last 5 games. So, mid-table fodder, basically, as it stands. Let's just move on and see. Yep, reputation, 2.5 stars. I believe it is national reputation as well. Curzon Ashton, by comparison, is 1.5 star. And regional reputation, 
which is why I think they are going to struggle in League One next season. We're predicted to finish eighth, so there are thereabouts for the playoffs, which is exactly what I will hopefully be going for next season. Uh, we've got a director of football, we need an assistant manager. And we've got a 10,000 capacity Adams Park, which is, what, over double the size of Tameside, which is handy, and a £63,000 wage budget. I, I mean, that right there is part of the reason I left Wickham as well. It's massively, it's more than double, more than double what they, in fact, one and a half times exactly what uh, Curzon were going to give me for the new season. Uh, let's have a look at the squad here. Shea Charles is there on loan until 2024. Oh, he's going back at the end of the season. We'll see if he's any good and see if I can try bring him back in. He is someone who I've kept an eye on since FM21. I think I've had him like one save before. He's kind of decent. You know, who else have we got here? By the looks of it, they like to play a 4-2-3-1 as well. That is perfect. We'll go through the squad in a little bit anyway. Uh, club vision, sign players under the age of 23, develop players using the club's youth system, or if there's anyone any good. Under the age of 23 years old, that's exactly how I like it. Work within wage budget, sell players for profits, fine. And maximum one year contracts for players over the age of 33. Pretty much anyone over the age of 33, chances are I'm going to be getting rid of anyway. And in League One, the club want me to, or well, the board want me to finish in the top half, that's fine, I think that's more than doable. And just maintain that top half finish in League One. Well, preferably, we will be aiming a little bit higher than that. I'm hoping for at least the playoffs, depending on how the transfers go this summer. So, we're in the hot seat. Let's have a look at the finances just quickly, see where we are. I mean, overall, less money than Curzon, ironically enough. Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're over the wage budget. Although, I think next season is going down. All right. So I think at the moment I'm four and a half thousand over the budget. But I think there's by the looks of it, there's a lot of players leaving. Right, yeah, there's a lot of players who are leaving. Um, by the looks of it, yeah, we're going to be saving a fair bit of money. So that's absolutely fine. Come July, we will have some wage budget. If anything, what I'll probably do. Let's just swap this down a little bit. There we go. Still, still over the wage budget, amazingly. But I think with a lot of players leaving at the end of the month, because we are in June now, we're going to be saving a fair bit of money. And by the looks of it, it's players who are not that good. Sam Vokes is still here. My goodness. He's leaving at the end of the season, apparently. He's out of contract, more to the point. I mean, three goals in 30 appearances. Yeah, he doesn't look to be that prolific of a player. League 2 standard as well. Blimey, capped 64 times by the Welsh, well done. I don't think he plays international football anymore. Who is the best player we have here? So apparently it's Daryl Hogan, who is a winger on both sides. Yes, he is. Excellent. A uh, lot of pace, good technique, decent mentals. He's 31 years old, though, but I think he'll be good for at least a couple of seasons. So it looks like we will be building around wingers uh, at the club. David Wheeler, as well, is a very good winger. Bahambula. That's fine. We got centre backs, full backs, left back. We got a striker. Who's the top? Who's the top goal scorer this season? Sam Smith. Thirteen goals. Twenty-six year old Englishman. I mean, his pace leaves a lot to be desired. <laughs> He's not that big. Uh, not that big. Sorry. He's not that fast, is he? Oh, bless him. He's apparently League One standard, right? I'm going to be going through this entire squad. Oh gosh, how many two-star players? I mean, they achieved mid-table with this squad. Not going to lie, they did well to do that with 24 players, many of whom are not exactly quality. All the way from Oliver Pendlebury downwards. And they haven't even got good potential either. Oh crikey, right. Um, yeah, this is an aging squad. This is a very aging squad. How many? I mean, that's a lot of players, isn't it? 11, almost half the squad is 26 years or older. So this summer, we're going to need to bring in quite a few younger players, a bit of uh, potential, a few hungry players who are willing to actually improve. What are the dynamics actually saying? 
I'll do the team meeting. I'll do all that off camera anyway. Club atmosphere is good. Team cohesion is good. Managerial support is good, but it's still early days. So we'll see how that goes. Team leaders, Stuart, McCarthy and Wheeler. We've already identified Wheeler. He's a, oh gosh, he's 33 year old winger. He's He's got no pace. Good grief. He's going to have to go, I think. McCarthy looks decent. 28 year old right back. I think he'll more than likely be staying. And Stuart, who's very, fairly professional, that's good. Six foot one centre back, 31 years old. I think he'll be good for at least a season or two. There's a lot of players who are other players or influential. What the heck? Are players are currently unhappy. Yeah, we're going to be going through this squad utterly. Oh, more than likely, be completely dismantling parts of this squad, especially those who are leaving. In fact, those who are leaving can all leave. Shay Charles, I've had him before. He doesn't even look that good. I've got to scout him, apparently. Oh, boy. I'll scout him and see if he's actually any good. Who wants him? Quite a few teams. Okay. Right, so what's going to happen now? I will be going through the entire transfer period with Wickham. I'm probably going to strip half this squad to pieces. Many will leave. And hopefully, many will come in as well. Especially with that reputation hopefully it'll be a bit easier than that Curzon to bring in a few more quality young players and I'm hoping we can but it's not tipped over to the new season yet hopefully the aim for the new season is to not only be in the top half of the league but hopefully challenge for the playoffs that is the overall aim as we try and continue our move up through these divisions like I've said previously in this video and in previous episodes as well I moved to Wickham Wanderers because of the reputation. It is, in my eyes, a step up from Curzon Ashton. Even if it is in the same division, I think Curzon Ashton are going to struggle and they will be down near the bottom. Whereas at Wickham Wanderers, I'm aiming to be up near the top. So that, for me, justifies exactly why I have moved. Still studying for my Continental B. How long have we been doing that? About four or five months now? Finish it already, man. The attributes are starting to improve nicely. And my overall reputation is about 40, oh, it's 45%, it was 50, but 45%, I'd kind of outgrown Curzon Ashton to an extent. And I feel it was the right time to move on. We'll be back at the end, or sorry, at the beginning of the new season. We'll be going through all the transfers before we kick off the new season. He's hoping it won't be as frustrating of a summer as it has been previously with Curzon Ashton. If you have enjoyed this video and if you are looking forward, if you're excited for a new adventure with Wickham Wanderers here in Unemployed to Legend, make sure you hit the like button down below and click the subscribe button so that you don't miss the beginning of the new season that is coming up and also all the transfers that we'll be going through as well in our first summer here at Wickham Wanderers. Uh, thank you so much for watching, have yourself a great weekend and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode, hopefully on Monday.